When you're a child, most things in life have the ability to be scary. However, there is a certain innocence in kids that sometimes makes them unaware of what really is dangerous. A nice man looking for a cute lost puppy isn't scary at all compared to the monster under your bed. But in reality, the man is far more sinister than any childhood monster. Tonight's episodes feature just this. Childhood encounters with people far more dangerous than anything a kid could ever imagine. Welcome to the Nightmare Society. This happened around four years ago in middle school, grade six, around when I was 10 or 11. Often our school would do fire drills three times a year and one lockdown drill so every student can be prepared for emergencies. This happened around mid-year when we'd already done our lockdown drill months ago, so when the specific siren went off I knew it wasn't a drill. At the time I was in the toilet when the sirens started blaring. Of course I was scared, leaving myself locked in a stall. We were always told if we were in the bathroom a teacher would come get us and take us to the nearest classroom for safety. I remember counting and waiting a few minutes for whatever teacher would find me, but none came. I decided to exit the bathroom and walk around in the yard a bit. The sirens were still going, so trying to hear for anything wasn't really an option. At the front of the school, there was a dirty man who was leaning on the fence, just staring towards the school, knife in hand. When he noticed me, he waved before entering the school, walking towards me. Of course, I started running away, heading towards the bins and hiding between those. He never found me, but I know he was arrested because my mom brought up the info on him recently, describing that he'd been watching the school every day in his car, and the reason the school went into lockdown was because they noticed him standing out front. And the reason why my mom only told me this info recently was because she thought I couldn't handle it back then. When I was young, from the ages of 2 to 10, I lived on a 7-acre ranch. There was a small house in the front of the property where we lived, a huge grass yard and cabinet shop behind it, and an orchard in the very back full of walnut trees. My father was a carpenter that always worked in the shop, and my mother was a school teacher that was almost always busy. Because of their jobs and the fact that they were new to parenting, as I got older they really didn't pay as much attention as they should to where I would wander off. I would spend my days roaming around the yard, playing in the dirt, and running through the walnut trees. I obviously didn't question my lack of supervision as it was fun to explore this huge plot of land, and I just thought I was being a normal kid. When I was about seven years old, my father surprised me with a brand new child-sized ATV. It wasn't one of the electric ones that you are probably picturing either. It was a damn fast gas-powered quad four-wheeler. Now, at this point, a good amount of you are probably questioning why someone would give a gas-powered ATV to a seven-year-old child, but like I said, my parents were a bit reckless, and they, well, my dad just wanted me to have fun. Pretty much right after I got the thing, I learned how to ride it by myself and started going farther into and past the property than I ever had before. I now had a free ride to basically as far as my young self would let me go before turning back. I started riding through the orchards behind my house almost every day, and I loved it more than I had loved anything before. I would leave my house and be gone for hours. After a while, I gradually started roaming farther and farther away from my house as I became more brazen and a little older. 
I would ride down this dirt path that would lead past what I assumed was our neighbor's land and to a ditch that held water. At the time, I just liked looking at the water as it flowed and I felt like I was a little explorer. I honestly never contemplated that what I was doing could be the least bit dangerous and I don't think my parents knew how far I was riding. When I think back on it now, just the idea of riding a pretty dangerous piece of equipment far away from my house without my parents knowing where I was, and before cell phones existed, is pretty scary in itself as I could have crashed or hit my head and no one would have been able to find me. However, luckily this never happened and it is not what the story is about. So one day, like every other day, I was riding far away from home and I passed by a man wearing a dirty white shirt, denim jeans, and a wicker farmer's hat. I remember it vividly as it was the first person I had seen in all the time I had been out there. I remember the surprised look in his eyes when he stared at me while I rode past him. I had no reason to stop and my parents had always taught me about stranger danger so I kept going and just forgot about it. On the way back home a couple of hours later I was coming up to the same spot and it dawned on me that this is where I had seen the man. I looked ahead not expecting him to be there as I said it had been hours, yet as the trees parted there he was. I really didn't think it was too weird because I figured that he was either a farmer or a homebody, so I kept driving, coming closer to where he was. He seemed friendly, to be honest. He had a big smile on his face like he was happy to see me. To my ten-year-old self, I just thought he was a friendly guy, so I waved at him as I passed by and he waved back. I continued on my way and drove home not thinking much about it. I don't really remember how much time had passed between then and the next time I went riding, but it couldn't have been more than a couple of days. Like usual, I took the same dirt road past the same few orchards to the same ditch full of water. I didn't think much about my previous encounter, so I hadn't been thinking about the stranger with the big smile. I was sitting on the edge of the ditch when I heard footsteps in the dirt coming up from behind me. Again, I remember this vividly because it was not a common occurrence to see anyone on this trail. I remember being more curious than scared and turned around to see the same stranger with a smile. This time his smile seemed to be more of a toothy grin. He called out to me as he walked up asking what my name was in a heavy southern drawl. I told him with confidence that I wasn't really allowed to talk to strangers, to which he said, That's a good idea, although you really shouldn't be out here all by yourself. It can be dangerous for a kid your age. I remember this striking me in the gut with a little bit of a butterfly feeling. I wasn't afraid, but I felt uneasy. This piqued my curiosity, however as I wondered what he meant, so I asked him. He continued to walk closer to me, slowly, and answered, I heard they found a little boy out here, just around your age. I think it was that ditch right there where he drowned. I would like to point out here that although my parents were reckless, they were not stupid. If there had been a drowning near our house that was reported, or there had been a story in the paper, they definitely wouldn't have let me out anymore. Anyways, he continued. Why don't you come with me, and I'll take you back to your parents. It's not safe out here for a kid your age. Uh, it's okay, I have my quad right there, I'll, I'll just ride back. I pointed over to the side of him where my quad was, but he didn't look. His eyes remained fixed on me. They were deep brown, almost black, and piercing into me. At this point, I was scared, and I knew that this could be a bad situation. I was hoping that he was just a concerned old man, but there was no way I was going anywhere with him. I got to my feet to start walking to my quad, to which the man said, 
Should a kid your age be riding something that dangerous? Let's just put it in my truck and I'll give you a ride back. I don't see a truck. I said looking around, hoping to talk my way out of the situation. Oh, it's right over there on my property. You can't see it from here. He said, his smile widening. It's really okay. I'll just go now. I said, starting again to walk to my quad. But as I passed him, he reached and grabbed my arm. You really shouldn't be out here. He said, staring me deep in the eyes. It's really not safe for little kids. Let me go, you're hurting me. I shouted, starting to panic. But this only made him grip tighter. Maybe you don't deserve to go back home. What kind of parents would let their kids out here all alone? Maybe you should come home with me and I'll take care of you. At this point, I was about to pee my pants. I was freaking out and I started to scream. I don't know if I was saying anything, I just know I was screaming as loud as I ever had before. This only seemed to anger him as his once toothy grin turned into a face of anger. He put his hand over my face and I took this opportunity to bite his finger as hard as I could. I still remember the taste of blood so I know I hurt him pretty bad. Thankfully this caught him off guard as he finally let me go. I knew this was my one chance to get away from this weirdo so I booked it to my quad as he winced in pain. You little shit, get the fuck over here! He cried in anger. I knew I didn't have much time, so I jumped on my quad and turned the key as fast as I could. It started up, and just as I pulled the gas handle, I felt a hand start to grab my neck. Luckily, he didn't have a grip yet, as I was already starting to drive away. I punched it and noped the hell out of there. At this point, all I could hear was the sound of my quad, so I wasn't sure if he was running after me. But I wasn't going to look, as I could possibly crash and be S.O.L. I drove down that dirt path as fast as the quad would go, probably the fastest I had ever driven it. When I got home, I peeled out into the dirt and ran into the house, hoping to God my mom was home. I burst into her room, bawling, and there she was. She asked me what was wrong, but I couldn't talk yet as I was so afraid. I just kept bawling. I think I cried for a good 30 minutes before I could summon up the strength to stop and tell her what happened. I remember the fear in her eyes as I described what happened. She pulled me close to her and hugged me as hard as she ever had. The next day I talked to a police officer and recounted the story of what transpired. I honestly don't remember much after this as I think I started to block it out. It's not really something a 10 year old wants to think about. Needless to say, they never let me off the property again. My dad started drinking and we lost the house soon after this anyway, so I didn't have to live there much longer. Recently, I was thinking about that day after I started trying to remember various parts of my childhood. My parents had never really asked because I tried not to think about it. So yesterday I went to her house and asked her if they found the guy considering he had lived pretty close to our property. She was kind of startled by the question because we hadn't talked about this in 15 years. She paused for a minute as if pondering whether to tell me and said, He didn't have any neighbors out that way. It was all corporate owned land and the description you gave didn't match any of the neighbors in the other direction. We called the cops and they went to search where you told us you were, but the guy was long gone by the time they got there. They looked around the property and found an abandoned house that hadn't been used in years since the land was purchased. When they looked inside, they could tell that he had been staying there. Apparently, he left his stuff behind. We never told you this because you were way too young, but one of the things they found was a black grocery bag. It had a roll of duct tape and a hunting knife inside. Thanks, Mom, but did I really need to know that?
When I was about 10 years old, I shared a room with my older brother, who was about 15. We lived in a suburb area in New York, and not the greatest area, but not riddled with crime either. There are two windows in my room, one that overlooks the backyard and one that connects to the front porch. It came in quite handy for my brother to sneak out and meet with friends. If you step out of the window, you're on the porch, so anyone on the porch can access the window. I was never bothered by that thought because, quite honestly, it had never crossed my mind. My bed was touching this window while my brother's bed was perpendicular to mine. It was an odd setup, but that's besides the point. Now, this was before we had any sort of smartphone or laptop to keep ourselves occupied, so... On nights when we weren't sleepy, we would stay up talking to each other and making up dumb games to pass the time. That took place during the summer. We stayed up into the late hours of the night. Perks of having no school. It was probably around 2 a.m. and eventually we were playing a game where one of us was a goalkeeper and the other one was taking a shot. Like football slash soccer terms. We would both say at the same time, either left, center, or right, if the goalkeeper if the goalkeeper guessed the same as the one taking the shot, he would get a point, and if the person taking the shot said a position other than what the goalie said, they got a point. We went for a couple of rounds of this, and I was beating his ass at it, even though that's irrelevant. I don't remember what round we were on, but we did our 3-2-1 countdown. My brother, the goalkeeper, said left. I, the shooter, said center. The voice from outside the porch window said left. Me and my brother froze. We had the shade down, but my mom had left the porch light on, so that was the only light illuminating our room. The dim porch light coming in from the borders of the shade. At the time, in my house was my mother on the opposite side of the house, my sister the room over, my dad in the basement, and me and my brother shitting our pants practically. We waited for what seemed like an hour, but was probably only 30 to 45 seconds, and we heard a giggle and a playful knock at the window. Let's go another round. Come on, boys. The voice said in a cheerful, playful tone. Honestly, I want to say it was a scary voice and sounded menacing, but it didn't. It sounded like a woman, not too old, but not too young, and it was just normal. Like a normal sounding voice. Nothing off about it besides where it was coming from and the time it came. Me and my brother were seriously freaked out, and I was about to break down because of how close I was to this woman. The thought that all I had to do was lift the shade and I'd be face to face with this person scared the shit out of me and made me go still and stiff as if I had just looked into Medusa's eyes. After a while of me and my brother not responding, my brother started slowly moving from his bed to the door as to not make any noise. As my brother was tiptoeing to the door, the sound of nails being ran down the window started. It was very slow from top to bottom. At that point, my brother made it to the door. He looked back at me and brought his finger to his lip, gesturing me to keep quiet. Once the nails stopped running down my window, I heard her light footsteps make their way off my porch and disappear. I laid there for an eternity not moving until my brother returned and I saw my mom moving hastily by my door making her way to the front door. The porch light flipped off and I was left in darkness with my brother waiting in the doorway for my mom's return. I heard my mom call my dad up and his groggy annoyed footsteps coming upstairs. They talked and then came in me and my brother's room and we relayed what happened. Apparently, my mom caught sight of the lady turning out of our driveway on foot behind some tall bushes. Thank God we had a long driveway, otherwise my mom probably would have thought we were crazy. Considering no harm was done besides leaving me terrified of my window, my parents did not call the police. 
They just thought it was really weird and stayed up the rest of the night to make sure she didn't return. I'm 17 now. My brother is in college, so I have the room to myself. My bed still touches the window because I'm too lazy to move the rest of the furniture in my room so I can move my bed. The shade to that window has not been opened since that incident and probably never will be. A huge thank you to our contributors, Masher Upper, Drowsy57, and Literate Pump. Thank you for sharing your encounters with us. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by liking this video and sharing with your friends. And if you're not already subscribed, please do. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for updates. I'm always looking for true encounters and suggestions, so please send yours to nightmaresocietyradio at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at nightmaresocietyradio. Thank you for listening, and as always, stay safe.